no, I really wasn't going to throw these away. But what I want to show you today is how I can take a really washed out, bland piece of stag material or deer horn and bring it to life again, make it knife handle ready. How I prepare it, dye it, and that sort of thing. I'm also going to do something new today, and that is take what I would normally do on a crown handle is smooth out where the tine is cut off and retexture it, much in the manner as Spencer Alpin does. If you don't know who Spencer Alpin is, he is a magician when it comes to retexturing stag and horn material. I'll leave a link to his website, or if he's got a YouTube, I'll do that. But he does outstanding work and he sells it. it looks totally natural. But I'm gonna try it today for the first time. I don't know how good it turned out, but first thing we're gonna do is get this ready to dye and bring it to life. Let's do it. So before I do any dyeing, I want to go ahead and texture this or attempt to before I do that so I can do all of them one time. Like I said, this is my first time ever doing any texturing. I know it's not going to look like Spencer Alpins, but what I'm going to do, and I don't really know if this is proper or the correct way, I'm going to take and mark some lines on there and kind of make it look natural and somewhat follow those lines when I start the carving. And I'm not too worried about using black marker and it soaking in or anything because that'll be removed, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Okay, that didn't turn out too bad, but we'll see how it looks once it's all colored. First thing I'm going to do before I put the final coloring on it is take some brown leather dye. This is what I use. A lot of people use different stuff. I don't know what everybody uses. I don't know what Spencer uses. This is how I've always done it and it works out pretty good. Sometimes I use black, but I'll go into those grooves and color them first. It soaks in very well. Then I'll come back and sand off the tops to do the actual coloring to make it kind of look like this part. All right, we'll let that dry and then we'll come back and do the dyeing part. All right, so it dried and uh, I just hit it with some 600 grit, but I'm still not crazy about the grooves. I'd rather them be darker to try to match some of this other darkness here. And the brown didn't do it, so I'm going to hit it with some black dye. Same stuff, some black leather dye. Just in the grooves if I can but I'll still sand it off. I'm experimenting here at the same time. So I'll let this dry and sand it again and see how it looks. So after drying, I think it'll be close. It won't be perfect, but let's see. So now it's time to do the dyeing of the whole antler to try to match this now. But what I use for antler dyeing is potassium permagranate. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get this, but it, is a powder form 
and I use a small amount to water, a teaspoon in this jar of water. So you can experiment with the mixture, but it takes a very small amount. Now this stuff will go on and it'll look maroon or red, but don't worry, as it dries, it'll turn brown. First time I ever used this stuff, I was like, oh, I ruined it. It'll turn brown. You can see how reddish maroon it looks, and I'm just gonna really saturate it, and I'm doing the whole antler, but I wanna do this spot first to try to start blending it out. And you'll have to use several coats to get it to match, get it to the color you want. Doing an antler that, that you have it carved on, which is my experience, is much easier. I'm gonna try to blend this and we'll see. I will let that dry and then I'll apply another coat. In the meantime, I'm gonna start dyeing the other antlers that don't have any carving on them. See how red that is? It all turns brown, kind of, I guess, oxidizes. All right, we'll let that dry and keep applying till we like it. So I wasn't too happy the way it was turning out. So I went in and took the black dye like I did on the other antler, went into grooves and then sanded it back out. Now I'm going to apply the potassium pomegranate. I think it'll look better. This is elk horn, doesn't have a lot of texture, so it's really difficult to bring out anything that looks great, but it, it'll, it'll look good, I think, when we get done with it. I'll just keep doing this till I'm satisfied with the color. Let this dry, we'll do it again. Okay, that's about five or six coats. Didn't keep up with it, but at least that. I like that color, I could go more, but pretty satisfied with that. Got the darkness in there that I like. But now once I get a handle cut, which will be about this much or so, and buff it, it'll look real nice, I do believe. The piece that we carved, it come out okay. I learned a lot. My first carved and dyed antler. What you gotta remember is when you cut a tine off, you're gonna have some of that pith uh, exposure there, and that soaks up the dye a little more in, inside there. And that's what the, the little bit of dark black is there. I could do a little better with that, but overall it matches pretty good. And compared to one that all I did is cut it, and you can see what I'm talking about right there. As you go further down, you'll get a little more exposure into that pith. Like I said, I'll leave the link in the description for the stuff I used. So yeah, I hope you got something out of this. I did. Turned out better than I thought it would for my first carving. Now I'm excited to do some more. Maybe I'll get better at it. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to thank my patrons. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We'll see you on the next one.